Good morning. Apologies for the slight little delay there. YouTube live streaming has got quite a chunky lag. So with that said, good morning. I'm Matt and welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. In today's episode for you, we will be discussing foam and nothing but the foam today. And I've got quite a large stack of one, two, three, four, five models which are sat here. Uh, there is a fifth model which is sat, well, <laughs> out ready waiting to be made in as well. Um, but uh, yeah, we are going to be chatting about foam. Now, uh, this episode is being recorded live, so we leave all screw-ups in. And as you'll see on the right-hand side of my screen, uh, there is a live chat which is going along with this episode. So if you are watching this live, uh, get involved with the live chat. Oh, big hint for those of you which are on iPads, it's hiding in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, sorry, the bottom right-hand corner. It's underneath live chat, bottom right-hand corner. Click on that and you can actually join in the chat. Uh, they, I don't know why they hide it on the iPad app, but they do. Hey-ho. Uh, so you can get involved uh, with the live version, and like I said, in the live chat. So good morning, uh, Henry, Sean, and Brian, and Andy, and RSFPV as well, and Echo. good morning too. Uh, and of course, if you're watching the recorded version, don't forget you can join in in the comments section underneath, or to go and join us in the Facebook group as well. So, diving straight into it this morning, we do have a whole collection of foam for us to be chatting this morning. And again, that's the reason why we've been doing an RC, that's why we're doing an RC Coffee Chat today, uh, is because I've got some stuff to talk about. Uh, and the first one is, which we'll be talking about, is uh, the Stiffy Wing. So, this is the Stiffy Wing. This is from uh, Itchy Fums, uh, Nick Robus. Uh, is its creator, uh, and I picked it up in the, the beta group, and you'll see it's got a funny fuselage, funny thingy, doodah, uh, underneath. In fact, I'll give you a little sneak preview uh, in there as well. Uh, you'll see that we've got a hub OSD board uh, sat up uh, in, in its bottom, uh, and a decent motor on its arse end. Uh, and the, the story behind this wing, and you'll notice it's very, very shiny. Uh, and uh, those of you which know about the Stiffy Wing uh, will know that I have not uh, been and used the armor or the glass reinforced tape, uh, which you're supposed to use on these models. Uh, and the reason for that is that I decided to go with a slightly different slant with mine. Uh, and that slant was, I think, can I just put that there to one side for a moment? Yeah, I think I can. Uh, it was the different slant which I decided to tape with it is that after seeing Dave's and Andrew's uh, uh, Stiffy Wing, which is a brilliant name, by the way. <laughs> it's right out there. Uh, it's right on borderline of being publicly acceptable. I, I, I love it just for its name. Uh, but on, on a serious point, uh, is that I had seen Dave's, and I've seen Andrew's builds as well, uh, and they are both really heavy models. By the, And again, I, Dave's got a couple of chunks of lead uh, on the front of his as well. Uh, and yes, Henry, I love those hub OSD boards as well. In fact, I, I, as it turns out, the Cadillac camera, which I've got on the front, which I, I can't recommend because I've never used it before. It looks good in the, in the goggles in the office, at least, uh, is the... Uh, Sorry, the, the, the board, yeah, Hubble or Steve board was brilliant. I really need, need to make a series on those. Anyway, um, yeah, Dave and Andrew's wing, they are, they, they were just so heavy. And I, and that means that with a heavier wing, you need more torque in the motor. So a little quad motor just wasn't up for uh, up for it at all. So they, they, they've both, they're both using bigger can motors like the D2826, 2200 kV. Uh, and the thing is, is if you keep the speed up with the wing, it will go fast. And because of its construction, because you're using that glass reinforced tape uh, and then packing tape in on top, it's an extremely tough wing. But that said, I've seen like Dave's got lead on the front of his. He's done a, like a canopy as well uh, on the top. And I've seen Andrew's too. And I know that they're really, really tough models. But there is a however or like a big but coming, uh, which is that I... I've seen those models and I wanted to do my own twist with them. Uh, so while they've gone and followed almost to the letter exactly uh, for what should be done with the construction of the model, I've gone off on my own little tangent uh, and gone for a super light build. Well, as light as I can re make it. Remember, it is black EPB foam, so it's quite a heavy, although tough foam. Uh, and I think it comes in at 477 grams, 488 grams. Uh, without uh, the battery. Oh, talking of the battery, what I did on mine, I did, I did as much as I could to be able to fit 
uh, a 1300 4S battery pack down the nose. Uh, and I did then go on to put some little LED lights on the back as well. They are super, super cool to say the least. And again, trying to keep the weight down. Uh, I, I dare I say, I went for a quad uh, ESC on the top as well, which is a bit of a 50-50 one uh, because, um, yeah, uh, I know that that motor pulls about 40, 37 amps uh, on 4S uh, for NACA. So um, if that thing catches on fire, uh, just for the record, uh, I can't complain. Uh, also, if this thing barrel rolls or does something silly, uh, apparently I should have put on the Elevons the other way around. And you'll notice that those of you which have got or have seen a stiffy wing, I've cut out this area quite heavily as well. Again, really kind of worried about noise on the wing. Um, so I've took away loads and loads of foam away from around the propeller um, because ultimately if it's a noisy wing then it won't end up getting flown. Uh, and we got a little bit of bad news at the end as well. You'll find, well, kind of bad news-ish. You'll find out about that at the end as well. Uh, so yeah, if, it, if I can't fly it, because it's too noisy, uh, then it's got to find a new home in short, and I don't want that for that one. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm really, I haven't flown it yet. It's been sat here, it's been hung on the wall for the last week or so. I'm sure those of you in the Facebook group have already seen the photos, and I've been really quite chuffed with it. Uh, very, very straightforward build. Uh, and I've just done my best to try and keep it as light and as simple as possible ish because I've put flashy LEDs on the back and put a hub OSD board in there while I was at it, you know, brilliant. Uh, little uh, life luxuries, should we say. Uh, good morning, Elijah, and good morning, Gordon. Good morning, uh, Atomic, Dutch, and Ranks, and Brad, and Andy, as well, as you can see in the chat uh, on the right-hand side of the screen. Next up, we, oh, and by the way, we will get to the mutant mini Talon, uh, but it is at the bottom of the pile, so we will get to that one in a moment. Uh, also from Nicholas Robus but from Sell is it Saw Ahead? Sell Ahead? I need to get this right. I always feel bad. Uh, wild thing. Oh, it does help if you can type wild thing. Uh, saw Ahead. See, like I said, I always get it wrong. Uh, saw Ahead Cell Planes. The SAS uh, Mini. What? Uh, sorry, yeah, the S uh, SAS Mini Wild thing. Uh, and uh, I'm sure some of you have seen the photographs uh, in the group. Uh, and it is absolutely brilliant. I love the build mythology for this one uh, because there isn't, well, the only glues required is to glue the two wing house together uh, and let's put it on this side so it's a little bit better. Uh, the only glue you need is to put the two bits in the middle and the only tool, you literally only need one tool, uh, which is either a craft knife, which is my was my weapon of choice, uh, or a pair of scissors. The, 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 it looks fantastic, and or it literally, or it's just tape. You've got armoured tape underneath, that glass reinforced tape underneath, uh, and you just lay it on. There, there's no laminating, there, there's nothing complex about this build at all. Uh, literally, a child could do it. Uh, and um, with the wild things is the, the, the best saying I've heard about these, these are a model for life. Uh, and you could you could quite well believe it because if you look really closely uh, in there, you'll see. I hope that's coming out on the camera. There, you'll see the glass reinforced tape on the. It's trying to focus on me. Apologies. There we go. Uh, you'll see the glass reinforced tape uh, on there. Uh, and if you hit a tree, bush, whatever with it, uh, is that it, it will survive. And if it doesn't survive, and you end up with a big dent or whatever, uh, you can just peel the tape off, and you've still got loads on the roll. Uh, for both the colour tape and the the, the armoured tape, uh, and you could replace it very, very easily. And it is literally, it, it, a model like this would be the perfect model to do with a young one, because it is so simple to do. There's nothing complicated. The only, uh, there's no, there's the only special tool is a pair of scissors. That's it. Uh, and I've been to set mine up with a little light, well, I'll open it up. I am just using the tape. It's got a little trap door in the bottom. I thought it was so well thought out. And there is a little, little lion pack uh, in the bottom, which I've been set up. Uh, and yeah, really, really straightforward. And I'm so looking forward to getting this one ready for the flight line. So that is the mini world thing, uh, 30 inch uh, slope soaring wing. So uh, somebody was asking in the, in the chat about this. Uh, basically you go to a slope and you chuck it off the slope and hope for the best. Uh, in short, with the slope wings, obviously, ideally on a windy day when the wind's hitting the slope and bouncing up the hill uh, so that you get unlimited lift. And by the way, if you've never been slope soaring, go do it. It is absolutely brilliant. And if you're worried about what model you should take, 
any model. Uh, in short, m most major uh, models will fly, except for a Tech Sumo. They are terrible, terrible models uh, on the slope, that's for sure. Uh, just looking at your chat this morning, uh, pre-workout <laughs> stream, <laughs> uh, indeed. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, Elijah says, I do the tape on my foam board models. Sometimes it works, uh, sometimes it works awesome, totally works awesome. Uh, it's just like laminating because if you think you've got tape on the top and you've got tape on the bottom, if you bend the wing that way, you pull in on that tape at the bottom so it, it resists the stretch. And if you've got the, the wing bent the other way, again, it's pulling the tape in the ob on the top level. Uh, so again, it's just like laminating it restricts the movement so you end up with a tougher uh, wing and again of course it keeps the dirt and the poo out which is absolutely brilliant uh, and yes absolutely <laughs> uh, Gordon totally totally with you that and you definitely want to check out Andrew Newson's channel uh, for, for tape uh, and uh, some of the scratch builds also uh, Ed from Experimental Airlines is definitely worth looking up as well uh, absolutely brilliant right moving on uh, is uh, and again, before we get to this one, it was a bit of a sad story, and I'm just going to pause for a moment. It was a sad story. It was a very cold winter's day. And me and Andy were out on the, at the farm, out on the flying field. Matt loaded up an 8,000 milliamp fear battery pack into his mini Talon, got everything ready, he, so he thought. Uh, and what happened after that was, I don't really know, but the outcome was my Mini Talon V1 basically died. Uh, I threw it, I threw it in a, a dead spot onto the, to the left of a hedge, so if there was any wind, which there was very little of, uh, that it was in a, a dead spot. I probably didn't throw it hard enough. I probably didn't give it enough welly. I probably left it in high rates. I don't know. I could have missed some on the pre-flight checks, um, which I normally don't, but basically I made a real fuck up uh, and that model went whoosh, whoosh, <laughs> inverted into the ground uh, and it, it was not a pretty sight and Matt said a lot of swear words. Uh, I can assure you I was not very happy with myself at all uh, and I was also very, very sad that I'd managed to kill uh, one of the models which I've done a lot of airtime with uh, so it wasn't long. I, so as soon as I'd done it, right, V2, there, there was many things which I wanted to, to compact into in version two of the Mini Talon. Uh, I decided that the airframe, while still pretty much intact, and it is going to go on to a new home, I've offered it to Craig as a free one. I'm like, Craig, I've got a Mini Talon here. Uh, it's, got, it's got two holes in either wing where I've had the receiver and the video transmitter. I feel really mean throwing it in the bin. Do you want it for a laugh and some shits and giggles, you know? So it's going off to a new home, so it'll, it'll get in a, uh, a, some new, more abuse uh, or, or some more use. Um, but I wanted to take the opportunity to create a new one. So from the sadness of stuffing it in, uh, it has come out my latest version. This is V2. and. It, for, for all intents and purposes, well, it's a mini talon, so it's very, very similar. Uh, if I put it around this way, uh, the first thing you'll spot uh, is the camera pan and tilt mount, which we've got on the top of there. Uh, you will notice that I've been crafted and molded a foam uh, thing around the wooden base. Now, that was actually a popular question, so let me just put that one down a second. That was a popular question. Now, I know about Mark... Um, and all the different designs for all the lids and the nose cone covers uh, which are already available to be 3D printed and I can assure you I have been in 3D printed out several uh, of these. Unfortunately my personal opinion on it has got nothing against Mark's work it's just that I just feel that they are just too flimsy uh, for my uses uh, especially the outer shells they could just be so, so much thicker again you've seen the kind of environment which I fly in uh, and I just didn't feel they'd be up to the task so I've got my own route I've got a much simpler route uh, and I'm actually very pleased with the outcome it does look just the biz uh, and I'll put again. I'll just put this up around that way so you can see. Uh, so it is a pan and tilt on there. When it's working, it is very, very cool to say the least. Uh, and I've put some uh, wire restraints on the top of here as well. Uh, also, no skid as well. Uh, there's uh, in the 
I'll do an overview video to this one, but in just a, that that skid, though that bumper on the front, absolutely brilliant. Uh, first for sure, uh, and then kept it as clean as possible. Uh, little air scoop on the top. I think I did a video on the this lid section. It's the worst thing about the mini talon. I can just see the color balance is just gone because of the white. Yeah, the the lid section which we've uh, here air scoop on the front. Now you will notice, hopefully, that there is a rear facing. FPV camera and that is one of the small mods and again it was all just working upon and cleaning up version one um, so for me I really wanted pan and tilt for this model so that's what I've been a set up and I've got that that tilt little uh, mechanism really clamped down hard uh, on its base so uh, and again the way which the ridge on the front I still can get this to show you if you're on here get that on there. there there's a little ridge just there to keep the air out uh, and this little pan system is literally there's there's like a few foul distance between the two so uh, it's tight as I can make it and that's that will help stop it uh, rocking uh, and then ultimately going on and killing the servo uh, again the other thing which I really really wanted I wanted a second FPV camera uh, on board as well so I could have a rear facing one I did think about having like a down facing camera but as Dave said mm, it's probably a bit of a novelty map so I kind of agreed with him so I went for a rear facing one I will do a full overview to the uh, mini Talon V2 uh, but just put it this way I'm very happy to announce that I knew have a new mini Talon V2 433 on the opposite side uh, and you'll see how clean it is up underneath the wings as well. I have done my absolute best to, to, to keep it as clean as possible. I will be showing uh, all my tips which I've put in V2 for you. Uh, also, just one thing to uh, carry on is that in the first version, I for, I've seen all these different skids for this rear section. And I actually used just a piece of flat carbon fiber strip for that. Uh, and I can tell you, literally hundreds of flights on from that, the carbon fiber strip was the simplest and the approach uh, which I ended up going gone with, uh, with the V2. It's very, very simple to do. So that was the Mini Talon. And yeah, like I said, super model, fantastic value for money. Was it 35 quid or something like that? Uh, when it turns up in the Banggood EU warehouse, um, as you will see, they're so cheap um, that you can have some fun with them. And the next model, which you'll see, uh, is a bit of a mutant, to say the least. The other thing is that um, if you look back in my videos and just search for Mini Talon, uh, is that you can fly them line of sight. And they are absolutely brilliant. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely brilliant corking models to fly line of sight, uh, especially if you put free motors on them uh, as well. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, now, I do apologize. I have kind of missed most of your chat for the last few moments. Uh, good morning, Nick, uh, by the way. Uh, and yes, Matt was just showing off his stiffy. Uh, he was indeed. <laughs> he was indeed. Now, that kind of brings us on to our, our gay plane. Okay, now, when you, you some of you may be thinking, Matt, you're being sexist, fascist, whatever you want to call it, and you're saying people are gay. No, gay means happy. And why is it happy? Why would it be a happy plane? That's the reason why it's a gay plane. Check that bad boy out. This took me, as you can see by the tape being on here, I feel really bad. Let me, that's, oh, that makes me feel better. Um, this gay, happy plane uh, has took me, uh, I think about 15 minutes yesterday, uh, I already had the wings out and uh, I just got some foam out, hot glued it on uh, for the base. If we take a look at the base, uh, I have followed the SCS welding structure by using glass reinforced tape. Uh, Nick, I remember I was saying about the crap tape. Uh, this is the crap red tape as well, just to save the bottom a little bit. And you can see there's, there's a bit of grass or something hanging off from the last time I flew it. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is my um, gay plane. Uh, which is going to be brilliant. So, um, yeah, you can have a close look at that. There you go. Gay plane. Uh, we, <laughs> which is the first biplane by Mini Talent I think I've ever seen. Uh, so, I'm really chuffed that I've got this one built. Uh, will I be using all three motors? Of course I will. I need to sort that mix out properly because last time I set the mix up on this one, uh, I always chopped my head off um, because uh, I obviously got it completely wrong. <laughs> 
short. So we will be getting the gay talent uh, out very shortly for some very happy flights. Whether it lands in one piece, whether it works, nobody knows those wings look kind of right. <laughs> I just don't know. I don't know if the uh, the ailerons are going to be anemic or not. I really don't know. I haven't powered. I am connected up the lower um, uh, ailerons because they'll just get broken on landings. Uh, but whatever happens, it should be good for fun. Uh, it's sure. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, also, to give you a heads up, oh, what a complete piece of fucking shit. Uh, Fairwing. I wholeheartedly suggest that you do not buy this one. Uh, there will be an absolute slating about this wing coming out uh, very, very shortly. Uh, that is also topped off by that stupid bloody wing. Uh, we're at Bratton Camp. Those of you which don't know uh, Bratton Camp or the Westbury White Horse, uh, we've gone out slope on for the day, and it is a really steep, like stupidly steep hill, to the point that you have to edge down sideways to get up, or, up, or uh, either to get down the hill or to go up the hill. That thing wing stalled on, uh, wing tip stalled on me. Uh, it's the the CG is exactly where they say it is, uh, and it tip stalled on me, and I spent 15 minutes going down that slope. Uh, and I was a right state when I got back to the top because the hill is literally like that. So Matt is not impressed with the fair wing. Uh, and actually someone suggested, oh, is that just another shit? Sorry, uh, another Chinese wing. I'm afraid to say it is just another wing. Um, and frankly, your money could be well better spent on a whole host of other things. So not really happy about that model at all. Uh, the HTC, uh, sorry, FTC Hunter, which is kicking around here somewhere, that other little wing. Uh, I flamed that one. The stabilizer so did all right, actually. It was, it was all right. But I'm going to swap it over uh, and stick either. Well, I'll stick a little 2020 board in it. Most likely if I have on it, uh, just for peeps and giggles. And I also need to sort out the, um, uh, what do we call it? Uh, the uh, video, uh, the FPV camera, the all-in-one one. The, I used the, an EF01, which is probably fine for indoors flying. Absolutely no good for outdoors at all. Uh, Brian says, people do hill walking for fun. Not that kind of hill. It's st stupidly steep uh, for it. Uh, let's have a quick look. Henry says, keep the LED from the back. Uh, yeah, I did have an LED or a flashing LED on the last one uh, near the. Oh no, that's on the clouds. Uh, but when I went back and reviewed some flight footage where Dave was chasing me, you just really couldn't see it. So I elected not to include that. Um, if I do include some LEDs on the two of the mini Talon, uh, it will actually be LED strips which I put on the model, uh, so that it's more really really apparent from. Uh, a distance where the model is so it can help us find each other when we're flying around together. Uh, who said read Charlie Chimp's heart out? Yeah, I did. Like, I was laughing all the way through. I was doing that. I think he might be proud, uh, to say the least. <laughs> uh, and we'll get it out flying as soon as we can because uh, all I can do, all I need to do is hit record. I have got absolutely no idea what that model's going to do when we throw it in the sky. Uh, when it just had the single wing with the twin motors on the front, absolutely brilliant. Uh, very, very enjoyable to fly, really fast, sounded fantastic, flew really well, completely mugged the battery. Uh, but yeah, really, really, really good fun. Uh, yeah, and uh, Christine, yes, her left prop does need balancing. I broke that one on the last flight uh, as well. Right, uh, that brings us up to, and again, I, I don't want to end this on like a sad topic, which is, but but I need to share this with you to give you a quick heads up, uh, is that I have, um, I've had to be a little bit harsh. I've had a really good clear out of my office here uh, lately, and a whole collection of models are, are on the way out the door and I'm gonna read well I'll give you a heads up there's over uh, there's about 30 of them on the way out um, so I'll give you a quick heads up on some of the stuff which is going well, well these are some of the ones which have gone there's an FMS Edge 540 that one's gone again huge took up far too much space in short uh, the Cloud Raptor went which is actually the Cloud Raptor I, pro I probably didn't do that one a very good service because it's such a light wing for the wingspan uh, if great for FPP and it rolled like a crazed possessed hamster uh, nuts. Uh, there was a pink trainer which I had here. 
there was a bear wing joint went here. There's a, the the yeah, the hobby king vampire uh, that's off to find a new home. The C1 chaser went off to a new home. Uh, a little hornet's been and gone. The black wing, what's left of that, that's gone. Uh, the HD wing is also gone as well. Um, the reptile S670 is going to find a new home, and my Phantom FX61 has also gone off uh, to it's gone off to a new home as well. Uh, and there are a whole, a whole raft of other models which are on the way at the door. The Hardcore 38, the Hardcore 24. Uh, the 38, as many of you know, I can't fly uh, any of the flying sites anymore because it's just too loud. Uh, and it needs, for, for, for here in the UK anyway, um, it needs to be heavily modified to try and cut some of the noise down. Uh, I'm afraid I don't have the time or the inkling to, to do that. And the 24 was all right, but it has the same issue. Uh, for such a small little wing, it makes so much noise. Uh, is silly so that one's off finding a new home uh, the wombat's finding a new home genesis actually is finding a new home as well uh, I, I had to be really really brutal and there's there's another 15 or so models which are off to find new homes as well uh, and the reason for that is just that i just want space I, I just want space back in the office you can imagine uh, the amount of foam which i've had here stored uh, and i'm not flying every single model like when I go out and I am being selective and I am falling back to uh, a select few models uh, when I do go out, like the mini Talon, as you saw, I've created a version, version two of it. Uh, there are models which do get a lot of airtime for me personally because I like the way which they fly. Uh, as such, uh, they, they, they're staying. Um, and if I haven't flown them in quite a while, then somebody else can frankly get some enjoyment from them. That's the way which I think about it, uh, is that find the models in new homes so that someone can else can go on uh, and enjoy the model. Like the C1 Chaser, it's not a bad model, uh, and it's gone on to Andrew. Uh, and I know Andrew will really enjoy that model. It's pretty much all set up uh, to go for him. Uh, out of the box, all he's got to really do is stick a battery in it and bind the receiver. Uh, even I now was sat up, set up in that one for as well. So I know he's going to really, really enjoy that one. So uh, Lee, thank you for finally uh, joining us there. Now it is time for us to wrap up. I am going to quickly just recap uh, what we've been through as far as the models go uh, today. You've got loads and loads of foam. I've got lots and lots of maidens to get done. Uh, very very shortly in fact that flight bag is going to be filled to the nines can you imagine trying to climb, climb put that across to the flight line uh, it's going to be good fun uh, to say the least loads oops uh, lots and lots of maidens to be done very very shortly uh, but to quickly recap we have the stiffy wing and as we said back at the beginning i've gone for a super light build on this one um haven't flown it yet but seeing Dave's, seeing Andrew's, it should be, it, well, I know they fly great. I think this one should be a fair chunk faster, uh, excuse me, <coughs> because it's about half the weight, will be about half the weight uh, compared to the other two models which you'll be flying up against. So uh, that gives me more agility, that gives me longer flight time, uh, that gives me all more opportunity to hit them both. Uh, so uh, yeah, that is the Stiffy Wing. Really looking forward to that one. But like I said, I have gone off the script maybe a little bit to what it's supposed to be. Uh, so as such, if I wrap it round, if I rip a wing off, I can't complain uh, because we all know that if we, if, if Matt put the glass fibre tape on it, it would be an awful lot stronger. Uh, we've also got the mini wild thing. Uh, I do have, I have recorded a separate video on this one. Uh, and poops around that side, uh, and it really is that red in in real life. It is that bright. <laughs> it's, it's oversaturating in the camera. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this one. As many people have said. Uh, it is a model for life. This 30 inch version uh, is for me, but don't forget we've got the 46 inch version, uh, which will be given away as a freebie uh, very shortly. Uh, and I'm really, really looking forward to doing that. I haven't started against the build starts today on that one. Uh, is that I'm really looking forward to doing that one because the, the, the opportunity to be able to give away a model, which I know that you could keep for life, 
I, I think is a fantastic opportunity. So the uh, Wild Thing, the 46 inch version, uh, will start getting built today. I've got some servos from Andrew uh, here, uh, which I'll be putting in it. And I'm, yeah, like I said, really looking forward to getting that one built and it will be given away as, uh, for free. Remember it was a freebie which was sent to me. So I don't really like that, it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. Uh, so the best thing to do, let's get it built up uh, and we'll ship it out wherever it is. Uh, it needs to go to its new home anywhere in the world. So we had that one, what else do we have? Uh, the Fairwing, yeah, absolute POS. Don't waste your money on it at all. Uh, <laughs> we had the Mini Talon V2, apologies for turning my back on you there. V2, I am super chuffed about this one. I will be doing a uh, overview video to this one just to go through some of the minor details on here uh, because it really was just a refinement of version one and getting those extra things in there which I wanted uh, into the model uh, and the wiring inside, you need to see it, is pretty slick uh, and very clean to say the least. And the last model which we spoke about this morning is <laughs> the Gay Talon. That one is gonna be absolutely brilliant fun. I have got no idea what's gonna happen with that. Uh, hopefully we'll be flying on Friday. Uh, I don't know if we'll, we'll definitely be hitting record on a camera and we might do a bit of live for shits and giggles. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, I really am looking forward to that one. I've had that one in my head for months now uh, and I'm so chuffed uh, that uh, I, I've managed to spend the 15 minutes to get it built. Uh, it really was 15 minutes. It was like, oh, where's the hot glue gun? And I just chopped up a bit of a wing bed, uh, just a, as spacers, and then I've just taped the rest of it hot glued and taped it on. Uh, so it should be good fun. Whether it lasts a flight, nobody knows. Watch this space, uh, to say the least. Uh, no, Lee, I haven't uh, uh, flown the new biplane yet. Uh, Andy Wood says, Matt, are you going to do a video on the wolf box? Yes, I will be doing a video on the wolf box. Uh, it is, um, yeah, it's an interesting one, uh, to say the least, because it, it opens up a couple of challenges. But I do have the wolf box here. It's just sat there in a box, as many of you know. Uh, it's just down to time here at the moment. And uh, I, I'm still learning... Um, one programming language quite well i'm like two months in now uh and i'm also just literally just started going back to a php framework which i need to get myself back up to speed on uh so that is progressing but i do feel that i sponge out within about an hour uh and i do need to go and do something so what's happening at the moment you'll see there's been quite a lot of progress here uh, and the reason for that is that i've been doing a lot of learning here lately uh, so I'll get to about an hour, sponge out, and then I'll go and do 10 minutes mucking around with a model, reset my brain, and then come back uh, and then dig in again. It's like being back at school again, but at actually a school or a classroom you actually want to go to, uh, which is quite different to say the least. Um, Lee reckons it's nice and slow. Well, as long as it isn't zero miles an hour, uh, I think it will be a bonus as long as it gets past the launch. We should be all right. Should be able to hold it in the sky for the gay talent. Um, we'll see. I'm, I'm here looking at it very fondly at the moment. Uh, you can't see it because the chat's in the way. But uh, yeah, I am looking at it very, very fondly. It does look like a lot of fun to say the least. Now, with that note, it is time for me to go. If you have enjoyed this ad-free episode, so no YouTube bastard adverts in this episode, do me a favor, press the thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy, enjoy this ad-free video, press the thumbs down button underneath. It doesn't really matter which one you hit. So with that said, if you have any questions about any of the models which you've been in seen here, uh, please just ask in the comments section underneath this video or nip across to the Facebook group. And again, there's a link to that in the video description underneath this video. If you're out flying today, have a fantastic day's flying. Please, please stick a battery in for me because I'm not out flying today at all. And I don't think I'm going to get out flying uh, until the weekend if the weather is good. Uh, and I don't even want to go and look at, check the, uh, the, web, uh, the weather website because it's always depressing and read, uh, read in. Hopefully, fingers crossed, Friday is a flying day. We'll see. We'll soon find out. So on that note, from myself, Matt, I would like to say a massive... Thank you to you for taking the time to join me for here today for what I see. Coffee chat. Fingers crossed. Legs crossed. Toes crossed. 
the maidens and all these go rather well. I hope so. And on that note, I'm off. Cheerios!